my fellow bear friends, I heal the all, all over the world. It is 2019, the year of our renaissance, the renaissance of Biafra. Nanum Oji Mudu, he may more, he bobble no 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 I set up this channel originally to help lay out a vision for the rebuilding of our nation torn by war, neglected and abandoned in ruins for 48 years, during which we have endured yet another war in slow motion. But through our struggle and the blood of the fallen and the guidance of our ancestors, the spirit of Biafra land is still alive, well, strong and indomitable. The very spirit of freedom itself, there is no greater force in the universe than the need for freedom, the spirit of the Afra land. But at the twilight hour of our struggle, I have to prioritize my fight for freedom first, so that when the time comes, I may be free to lay out my ideas and visions for this rebuilding as a free mind and man and spirit. For now, all I can think and dream of is that day. That day when the UN and nations around the world raise the Biafran flag and the mother of all parties that will happen in Biafra land after that for two weeks straight minimum the dancing the music the joy the food <laughs> Maya <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there will be a shortage of palm wine because I, 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 I don't think the palm wine tappers will be able to keep up with demand this will be the mother of all family reunions we are friends from all over the world coming back home all at once to share their joy. Even, even some who have not been back in years and decades. Any country you go to around this world, you will find a Chinese man. You will also find an Indian man. You will find an Igbo man. And most likely a Jewish man too. We Igbos are the third most spread out people in the world. We have global reach. Chuko Kikaviyama, the spirit of Alandi Igbo, Naomi Igbo, Yai Kikire Kaigoshi Owanile, Monke Monowiki Chukoki Kamiyama Biko 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 However, as I dream, <laughs> the current reality of the situation always drags me back to earth. But most of all, I understand that we're facing an existential threat. Like I said in one of my videos, we are in our twilight struggle. We are 
in a situation that calls for steely nerves, a heart of stone, a sharpened, focused mind. So they have sent their snake, that their snake, to come and dance in our land for the third time. This time we'll, we'll do them snake charmer. My brothers and sisters on the front line, I hail thee. I salute thee. May Chuku Kikabiyama be with you all. I have much respect for you guys. And I am as ready as Rambo to come and join you when the f- on to come and join you on that front line when the time comes. To my brothers and sisters worldwide and in diaspora. We should start a global clandestine network. With the general aims of one, the general aim of this network will be to monitor, target, and disrupt and unravel any nations that try to carry out operations to our that hinder our right to freedom by supplying arms to the Nigerian federal government. Two, we aim to monitor and analyze the military movements of the Nigerian military and the Fulani militia and their operation tactics. We will serve as background military intelligence to our front line The network will also learn, discuss, teach, and research insurgency tactics, guerrilla warfare, asymmetrical force multipliers, and militant fundamentalism. Four, the network will also plan and execute strategic protests around the world. We have global reach and we must be able to flex that muscle. 5. The network will gather and discuss ideas for the progressive development of Biafra land with a primary focus on human development and the integration of the new Biafra nation into geoeconomics. Six. In this network, we need people with all manner of experience from technical, legal, hacking, media, scientific, military, analytical, programmers, engineers, chemists, medical, street men, rugged men, ready, all sorts of people, ready to do anything for the freedom of the Afro land and for a better life from all over the world. We will not just talk, we will think. We will share all information with our front line. I am starting this network to keep us focused and to expect the unexpected. Until the day we and the world raise our flag in freedom 
we must never be complacent because the disposition of the Fulani show that they are willing to get violent by all means and we know their bloody history and cold-hearted nature the picture doesn't add up something is making the Fulani Caliphate <laughs> overtly confident we know they are only pretending to be struggling to defeat or well pretending to be struggling against Boko Haram and yet they are saber rattling down 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 at us for those versed in or with any acumen of military doctrine we all know that military class 101 states that avoid a war on two fronts at all costs so it begs to question why they are so willing to open up another war on a new front down southeast when they haven't even finished the ongoing war up north in the northeast I know the Fulani are not stupid. Sorry, I know the Fulani are stupid. But we're talking about a warlike people here with a history of callous bloodshed. So we're talking about a people that all they know is war. That's all they know. I believe that yes they see the cracks in their crumbling empire but in their 200 year old stagnated feudalist mindset they believe they can just do what they have always done which is to use force just throw force at the problem that's all they know how to do that's all they've done in the history of their empire or their so-called empire force and sword that's all they fail to realize that we're now in a new age and that their so-called empire is at a crossroad an empire at a crossroad is like being at a high stakes gambling game when an empire reaches this crossroad, those that choose to war it out, I think war is the only way out of the, of, the, of the problem, have always ended up nailed in a coffin. <laughs> from, from then on, <laughs> they, 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 are, they will only be spoken of in history at best. And even forgotten. The Fulani Caliphate is not only at its weakest point in history, but it's on its deathbed. It's ironic, the Fulani could have gone down in history like their great greater predecessors, the Moors, the Mali Empire, the Shanghai, all these empires who all left legacies of that that has or, or that, who all left legacies that 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 are still read to uh, read out today and and have now taken their place in african history but the only legacy that the fulani will be remembered for is for presiding over and running the most corrupt, disorganized, cantankerous, and miserable empires ever in the history of Africa.
an empire that was run on a hidden constitution of slavery and bloodshed. Clearly, Iflani had the most unprogressive empire in history. But finally, the chickens of death and destruction are now coming home to roost. Do you know that in the 1800s AD, the highest concentration of slaves anywhere in the world was in Sokoto? with an estimated 2.5 million slaves. Just check it yourself, type it into Google. It will come up even in Wikipedia. And because these Fulani <coughs> are so impoverished in progressive thinking, you know that they are still stuck in that 200 year old mindset of their glory days and still think that things think that things now are how they were and will just you know resort to their old way of violence to rectify any problems cattle rearing machete wielding thugs just wake up one day one build empire like Sina Moi Moi no wonder we have ended up with history's worst and most impoverished most undeveloped empire with no tangible achievements of civilization whatsoever That their people can't even and won't ever read. What did the Fulani ever achieve? What did they ever invent? What did they ever discover? Other than enslave and kill and subjugate other people. A fake empire built on. Built, built on. Slavery, bloodshed, a fake empire that built nothing, that makes nothing, and still believe in their heads that they are an empire. Empire based on what? A fake empire that has always been dominated and controlled by another foreign empire to bully and oppress your own fellow Africans. <clears throat> mm. Empire and the Kekanolo. If any of you grew up with a cat and a dog around the house, I'm sure you all you all saw how. The dog will enjoy chasing and bullying the cat all day, around the house all day, just loving it. Until one day, it bullies the cat into a corner. And on that day, the cat stands up and fights back. Tear the dog one slap. Tear and slap. And, and, and I'm sure if you also noticed the, uh, that the dog just chilled from that day on and respected itself. It's time for the Fulani to just leave us alone. As I said before, one of the modes of operation of this clandestine network will be to monitor, target, and disrupt, and unravel any nations that carry out operations to our right to freedom by supplying arms to the Nigerian federal government and the general geopolitical, 
disposition of nations towards the actualization of the Biafra independence movement and agenda. We will research the Nigerian military equipment and infantry numbers and condition and combat readiness. We will investigate and document, document the Nigerian military inventory with detailed studies of what types of weapons, tanks, planes, helicopters and equipment that they have and investigate countermeasures against these weapons and various options of disabling and stopping them or blowing them up. We will investigate and document how to make IEDs and booby traps for heavy weapons and infantry. We will investigate also how to bring down aircraft and their most vulnerable attack maneuvers. We will research how to make fortified positions and bunkers. We will research how to process and refine crude oil and how to set up mobile, portable and clandestine refineries. We will research how to strategically subvert any governments that hinder our actualization agenda. We will find and liaise with arms dealers, smugglers and bounty hunters. We need hackers for all manner of roles. We will also need people with humanitarian and medical experience to begin planning how they may deliver relief from the grind of conflict. There are these are but a few of the tasks that need to be done. I cannot even think of everything alone. Like I said before, this picture doesn't add up. We know the caliphate has always been cozy with the Sudanese. And if you analyze if you analyze the Darfur conflict in Sudan a few years ago, it was literally like a practice run for what is going on in Nigeria today with the Fulani headsmen. The Islamist Arab Northern Sudanese government wanted the land and the oil from the southern Sudanese and wanted to kill them off. The Northern Arab Sudanese knew that they could not kill off the indigenous Neolithic Southern Sudanese with the army because it will attract too much negative attention and it will be clear genocide for the world to see. So they employed underhand tactics. They mainly used the um, Janjaweed militia. I'm sure you remember that name, the Janjaweed militia in Darfur a few years ago, which was and, and this Janjaweed militia is modeled and operates exactly, well, they, they, they were modeled and operated exactly as the Fulani headsmen in Nigeria today operate. I'm sure you'll all rem remember that menace of the Janjaweed militia in Darfur a few years ago. It is happening in Nigeria today. We know that the Fulani Cabal are now in partnership with the Sudanese and have allies across the Saharan Sahel region in Niger and Chad. We know that we have an imposter in the Nigerian president, a man from Sudan. 
we know that there are now direct international flights from Kano to Khartoum. I mean, since when did Nigerians and Sudanese start, start using each other's countries as tourist destination? <laughs> my, my own brain is asking me that could this be for the purpose of flying in Janjaweed militia veterans from Sudan when the time comes. We also know that all military headquarters and strategic facilities are based in the north with the Fulani in charge of everything. Some of these strategic facilities <laughs> include the dry port in Kano. A dry port where arms and ammunition can easily be flown in, railed in, driven in and stored. They have their oil refineries in Katsina and Kaduna. We have always asked, I mean we we down south, we have always asked, why build refineries where there is no oil? Far from the, the source, the very source itself, where there is no refineries. Well, we also know that refined crude oil, well, not just crude oil, but refined crude oil products are fundamental and critical to warfare. We also know that you conveniently have your international airport in Kano, where most of these facilities are located. We know that they are now in training with their ongoing headsman attacks. And by rounding up our trained soldiers of Biafran extraction and sending them unprepared and ill-equipped for Boko Haram to use as practice with the further aim of diminishing the military experience and manpower amongst our people. We know that the, there is an Islamist grand plan to Islamicize not just Nigeria but the whole of Africa and that the now South Sudan and Nigeria have always been central to that agenda being especially being the, the traditional grounds for your slave raiding from centuries ago. The Fulani disposition shows that they are preparing for something. If you would like to join this group, my brothers and sisters, if you would like to join the Biafran International Clandestine Operations, please go to Facebook and type in the word BICO in capitals. We are subtle. My dream is to retire in our beloved Biafra land and spend the rest of my days as an artist making paintings and sculptures and inventing curious machines. But until Biafra land is restored and, and the, the level of human development raised to a standard of decency, we must not be complacent. We must start to make preparations for the worst case scenario before this dream is actualized. It is always better 
to be prepared than to be unprepared. Chance favors the prepared mind. Last chance preparation is no preparation. Waiting for all those you and whoever is like is like is like being a boxer on the receiving end of a serious beating in the ring in the boxing ring and and just waiting for the referee to call an end to the match just before you get knocked out Self-defense is not just even a fundamental human right. Even animals have as much right to self-defense as any human being. You cannot tell a chicken or any other animal, I'm coming to kill you because I'm hungry, so don't run and don't struggle. If you could communicate with any animal and you could tell them that, they will not listen to you. Self-defense is the fundamental right of any living thing whatsoever. Take care, my people. Find us on Facebook.